Back in 2002, 22 years ago, uh, I took a three-month contract in Holland. And in the first week uh, that I was there, I think it was on the second or third day, something happened that was just unbelievable. Uh, to this day, I still can't believe this happened to me. Let's get into the video. In 1997, uh, I worked in The Hague uh, in Holland uh, for about eight months. And it was my first contract overseas. I'd taken contracts in England before, but in 1997, that was my first one overseas. And I had never been to Holland before. Uh, so everything was new to me. Um, but in 2002, uh, I had been working in, I think it was Norway, and there wasn't a lot of work around. So there was a three month contract came up in Holland. Now it wasn't in The Hague, it was just outside The Hague, in a place called Zuttermeer. Um, it's about 15 minutes on the train from The Hague. And I knew a couple of guys working in The Hague in a different company. Uh, one of them was a Scottish guy called Rick, who I was quite friendly with uh, from my time in Norway. Um, I worked with Rick in Stavanger uh, back in 1998. And yeah, we, we became quite close. So I knew he was working there. Um, I think it was the second or third day um, we had arranged to meet for a couple of beers in Central Station. Now, when I moved to Zuttermeer to work there, I didn't want to live in Zuttermeer because there's not much there. So I was familiar with The Hague and I thought, if I could get some accommodation that was near a train station, uh, then I could travel to work easy and also to Central Station if it was on the same line. So I stayed in a hotel called uh, Hotel Central, which is in a place called Lysendam. Uh, that was the name of the station. So it was really handy, you know, 10 minutes, 12 minutes to get to uh, Zutermeer, to the office. And it was only, you know, four or five minutes to the uh, central station. So I had arranged to meet uh, Rick and an English guy called Colin who lived in Skidam, which is just outside Rotterdam. I had arranged to meet them in the central station bar uh, after work. So on the second or third day, um, my Dutch agent contacted me and said uh, we need to go to the post office to get your social security number. It's called a Sophie number. I said okay. Um, so that morning uh, when I went to the office um, I took my backpack, rucksack and I, inside that I had my passport. He told me to bring my passport. Uh, my file of facts. <laughs> yes, we had file of faxes in those days. Uh, and a few other things. Um, I can't remember what, but there was a few other things in there. Maybe my lunch. Anyway, um, the, the work was um, pretty boring, actually. It was a, uh, you know, doing 3D modeling of access platforms. Um, not something that's exciting. Um, and it was very, very slow work. Um, so, you know, difficult to get motivated. But anyway, um, we went to the post office, me and uh, Marcel, that was the Dutch agent's name. And we got to the post office with my passport and we went to, to register to get my social number. Um, but because I worked there in, there in 1997, I already had one. <laughs> so it was a bit of a wasted trip. Anyway, um, I went straight from the office to Central Station. Uh, to the Central Station bar, where I met Rick and Colin. And I hadn't seen them for, you know, a couple of years. Um, so, you know, it was good good fun catching up. Um, and then after, I think, two or three beers, Colin said he was going to head home. He had to get the train back to Ski Dam. So Rick and I continued. And we ended up going on a bit of a pub crawl, you know, because we hadn't seen each other for a while. Um, it got quite messy, uh, I remember that much. I think we visited, um, uh, what was the name of the pub? Shillelagh in Yavastrat, it's an Irish pub. And we knew the, the owner, Norman, uh, from our time there before. So 
Uh, that was good, and then we ended up in a couple of other bars, I can't remember. But it got to the point where I said to Rick, look, I'm going to have to watch my time here uh, because I'm working in the morning, I need to get the train uh, back to Lysendam to the hotel. Um, and where I was staying in the hotel, I was actually right up in the attic. So it was a really small um, and, and steep winding stair to get up into the attic room. Um, you know, it was still a proper bedroom, but it had the sloping, uh, you know, ceilings, obviously, because I'm up in the attic. And I didn't want to be walking up there uh, completely drunk, so um, I said to Rick, OK, um, I'm going to go, we'll catch up later. So I don't know what time it was when I left, let's say 11 o'clock at night. And I got the train, uh, the train, I think the train was going from um, hotel, uh, from Central Station to Rotterdam, but it was stopping on the way. Um, so I got on the train and fell asleep. Yep, uh, it's happened before, but by pure chance, I woke up uh, just before Lysendam. So I managed to get off the train, stagger back to the um, hotel and get into my bed. So anyway, the next morning I was uh, awakened by my phone ringing and it was Rick and he said to me, are you in the office? I said, no, you've just woke me up. So this is really unusual for me, right? Um, sleeping in, oversleeping, uh, very unusual, but we had quite a bit to drink. So I said to him, look, let me go. I'm going to have to get showered and then get to the office. Um, <laughs> so I got in the shower and I was feeling pretty rough. Um, I had a bit of a headache and I was dehydrated. Uh, but I got dressed and I went to pick up my bag. Um, couldn't find it. I looked in the cupboard, under the bed, really places where it would never be. Um, and then I remembered sleeping on the train. And then I remembered my passport was in my bag. Now, this is just the start of the story. Um, the crazy thing happens at the end. Just a quick one, guys. If you want to hear more of my stories working in the oil and gas industry overseas, I published this book on Amazon in 2022. And the book has more than 20 photographs in it, like this one here. This was actually a riot that happened in the shipyard when I was in Indonesia. Uh, also, if you have a Kindle and you have the Kindle Unlimited membership, it's free. It's always nice to get things for free. It's also free to subscribe to my channel. So let's get back to the video. Cheers. So, um, a panic. Um, I think I was due to go back um, to the UK uh, on the Friday. And this would have been you know, Tuesday or Wednesday. So I called Rick. He said, is that you in the office? I said, no. I said, listen, I said, uh, remember how I had my bag, bag with me last night? Um, well, it's got my passport in it, and I can't find it anywhere. Of course, he's laughing. I says, do you remember if I got on the train with my bag? He said, I'm pretty sure you did. So I'm thinking, it's on the train. Now, I don't remember picking it up, obviously, when I got off the train. So I said to him, look, what am I going to do? He said, call your agent. So I called Marcel, and he didn't know what to do. He said, uh, I think you'll have to go to the British Embassy. Now, because I was familiar with The Hague, I knew where that was, but I had to get the train to Central Station, which is the opposite direction to where the office was, and then I had to walk from there up to the British Embassy. So I finally got myself sorted, got on the train from Lysendam to Central Station, and then I walked up to the British Embassy. It's about a 10, 15-minute walk, and by this time I'm really, really struggling, you know. Anyway, I got to the British Embassy, rang the doorbell. Um, I know, crazy, right? You couldn't even walk in in those days. So I think I rang the doorbell and this woman came. She said, can I help you? I said, look, I've lost my passport. Uh, I said, I told her the story about um, falling asleep on the train or maybe somebody's stolen it when I was sleeping. And she said, look, you're going to have to make a police report. 
I thought, oh my God. So I had called the office just to tell them that I was going to be late. Um, so I called them back. I says, look, I'm at the British Embassy. I'm going to be late, uh, even later. Uh, then the first time I told them, they said, no problem, just sort it out. I said, OK, so where can I make a police report? And she said, well, there's a police station in Hollandspur Station. Now, I know where that was. It's only one stop from Central Station. She says, you go to Hollandspur, and in the basement underneath, that's where the police station is. So off I go. I walked back to Central Station. And I'm, I'm, I'm really, really feeling uh, worse by this stage. I managed to navigate uh, the train, got on the train to Hollandspur. And I thought, you know what, before I go down to the police station, I'm going to get myself a coffee, drink some water, have some breakfast, then go down. So there was a wee cafe there. I did that. And down I went into the police station. So as I walked into the police station, it was just a room. You know, I wasn't like a police station as such. The door opened and it was just a small room with some chairs and there was like glass windows at the, at the front, uh, sliding glass windows. So I went up to the, the window, I could see a couple of police officers sat there and the guy opened it. He says, can I help you? I says, uh, yeah, I said, I, you know, I fell asleep on the train uh, and I, I had my rucksack with my passport and different things inside it and I woke up this morning and it's gone. I think I might have, it might have been stolen when I was sleeping on the train. <laughs> so by this time he's sort of chuckling to himself. He said, right, I need you to fill in this form. So he gave me the form and as I was uh, just prepared to, to go and fill in the form, this guy uh, came up to me at the side of me. Um, he looked a bit like a uh, homeless guy. He was Dutch and he said, he spoke in English, he said, uh, I've had, I've had uh, so many things uh, stolen from my hotel. Uh, I said, oh, okay, I, you know, that's not my problem, mate. You know, I've got my own problems. So I just sort of ignored them and uh, went and filled in the form, gave it to the police officer and I went and took a seat. So I was sitting there for about, I don't know, five or ten minutes. And at the side there was a, like another room uh, with a door and this police officer, I assume, I assume he was a police officer, came out and said something, some name in, in Dutch. Um, and this guy, who the home, there was another couple of people there, but the homeless guy, uh, Mr. Homeless, was uh, who I was talking to, or he, he was talking to me, he got up and walked past me to go to the room. Obviously, he's going to report, um, you know, the things that he had stolen, allegedly. And as he walked past me, he had a rucksack on his back. And I looked at it and I thought, no, it can't be. <laughs> now, the rucksack I had was black and blue, and I had Nike on it with the Nike uh, logo. And that was what he had on his back. I thought, what's the chances? You know, no way. So, <laughs> so I went back up to the, to the sliding uh, glass window and I said to the police officer, that guy that just walked past to go into the room, he's got my bag on his back. At which point he started shaking his head and he said, you told me you lost your passport. I said, yeah. I said, but the passport was in the bag. Uh, he said, okay, what else is in the bag? So I had to explain everything. The first time, sorry, the first time he didn't ask me about the bag, I just said I'd lost my passport. But anyway, I explained what was in the bag, my file of facts, with my name and address, some contact numbers, and um, you know, whatever else was in there. He says, I don't know how we're going to play this one. So he says, just take a seat. So he got up and he went into the room. And I heard, I started to hear like raised voices, but it was all in Dutch. So I couldn't understand what was going on. We were taking Dutch lessons at the time, but you know, when people are shouting and it's muffled. 
next minute, the door opens and the Dutch police officer that I was talking to stuck his head out and went, So anyway, he went back inside. Yeah, a few minutes later, he came out. He said to me, we've got your bag. We've got your file of facts. But your passport's missing. I said, well, where's the passport? He said, uh, he said, the homeless guy said, he was given the bag by somebody, but the passport wasn't in it. Now, yeah, I know. Um, in those days, the British passport was very, very um, desirable and they would be sold on the black market for up to a thousand euros at a time. This is what I was told. So I said to the, I got my bag back obviously and then my file of facts. And I said to the police officer, okay, what do I do now? He says, okay, I'm going to give you a copy of the police report. You have to go to Amsterdam uh, to the consulate uh, to get a new passport. So I called the office again told them the situation and they said, okay, you know, we'll see you tomorrow. So I had to go to Ramsterdam. I had to get the premium service to get it the same day. I basically spent the whole day in Amsterdam, which cost me a full day off work, expensive. 95 euros, I think it was, for the passport, expensive. And uh, yeah, my pride. So you could say that was an expensive night out with Rick. Um, I, you know, always remember them, remind them that every time I see them. Okay, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.